So in this next module, we're going to be talking about cutting the clutter out of your writing. I want to start with a little quote here. This is from uh, William Zinser's book on writing well, which is a great book to pick up to read for this course if you have time. He says, the secret of good writing is to strip every sentence to its cleanest components. Every word that serves no function, every long word that could be a short word, every adverb that carries the same meaning that's already in the verb, every passive construction that leaves the reader unsure of who is doing what. These are the thousand and one adulterants that weaken the strength of a sentence. And they usually occur in proportion to the education and rank. And I find that last part especially amusing since I tend to teach people who are highly educated and high in rank. So I'm going to jump right in here with an example sentence that I'm going to go ahead and edit for you. So it reads, this paper provides a review of the basic tenets of cancer biology study design using as examples studies that illustrate the methodologic challenges or that demonstrate successful solutions to the difficulties inherent in biological research. You can kind of hear when I'm reading that sentence out loud that it's kind of bloated, right? There's a lot of extra words in there. I, they don't need as so many words to get across the simple idea that they're trying to get across. So we'll kind of go through this line by line. So this paper provides a review of. Well, that's kind of a long way to say this paper reviews, right? So you, this is an instance where we've taken a nice spunky verb, review, and it's been turned into a boring noun, a review, and also paired with a boring verb, provides. So we can just change it to this paper reviews. Then we get to, of the basic tenets of cancer biology study design. Well, of the basic tenets, that's something that doesn't really add much for the reader. The reader, it's so vague that it doesn't really help the reader understand what you're trying to say. So we can just get rid of basic tenets. So this paper reviews cancer biology study design. Using as examples, studies that illustrate. Now when I read that out loud, you can hear that it's awkward, right? Using as example studies that illustrate. We have a repetition in here. The word examples means the same as the word studies in this case, so we don't need both words. So I can edit this to using examples that illustrate. Then we get to the methodologic challenges. Well, that word methodologic is one of those kind of vague words that's so vague, again, it doesn't really add much to the sentence. We've already said that we're talking about study design, so it's sort of implied that there's going to be methodology in there, so I don't think we lose anything by striking that word. And then we get to, or that demonstrate successful solutions. Now notice we've got the word illustrate, and then we've got the word demonstrate. And you can kind of imagine that the author was sitting there and thinking, well, I already used the word illustrate, I don't want to repeat myself, so I'm going to go to the thesaurus and find a second word that means the same thing. So they found demonstrate, they put that there. If you catch yourself doing that, always ask yourself the question, do I really even need the second instance of that word at all? Oftentimes you can get rid of it. You actually just don't need that second instance of the word at all. So we can, in this case, just say that illustrate the challenges and solutions, right? We don't need uh, to have demonstrate again. So I'm going to cross that out. I'm also going to cross out the word successful. So think for a minute why I might have crossed out that word successful. So successful solutions. Can you have a solution that is not successful? You can't, right? Success is inherent to the word solution, so it's repetitive to add the word successful in front there. And then we get to the difficulties inherent in biological research. Well, okay, again, we've got a repetition here. We had the word challenges before, now we get the word difficulties. We don't need that repetition. And then we get inherent in biological research, which doesn't really add anything to me because I already know that we're talking about cancer biology study design. So I don't think we lose anything by striking that whole last little bit. So we end up with this paper reviews cancer biology study design using examples that illustrate specific challenges and solutions. So notice how we just kind of strip that sentence of all the garbage. We get down to the meat of it, only to the important words. So here's a second example that we can edit. So this sentence reads, as it is well known, increased athletic activity has been related to a profile of lower cardiovascular risk, lower blood pressure levels, and improved muscular and cardiorespiratory performance. So you can see again that that sentence has a lot of extra words that we can get rid of. So starting with, as it is well known, those kinds of little introductory phrases like that 
usually are kind of just dead weight and we can just cut them. We don't really need to tell the reader it's well known. We can indicate that by putting references at the end of the sentence. So that's kind of like just the author clearing their throat. So we're going to just cut that. It's just dead weight. So increased athletic activity has been related to, I kind of like better than has been related to, is associated with, that's just a little bit of a stylistic thing. Then we get a profile of lower cardiovascular risk. Well, I don't think a profile adds anything. Again, that's kind of those empty words that don't really add anything. So just lower cardiovascular risk. Lower blood pressure levels. Well, that word levels isn't needed. Just lower blood pressure. And improved muscular and cardiorespiratory performance. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying fitness. So I'm going to cross all of that out and just write fitness. So we get increased athletic activity is associated with lower cardiovascular risk, lower blood pressure, and improved fitness. Notice how much we've stripped away that was unnecessary from that sentence. And in this case, we actually could be probably a little bit more direct. There is actually a, probably enough evidence that we could say it even more directly. Increased athletic activity lowers cardiovascular risk and blood pressure and improves fitness. Now that, of course, requires a stronger, stronger level of causal uh, scientific evidence there, but we probably do have it in this case. Here's one last example to go through. The experimental demonstration is the first of its kind. It is a proof of principle for the concept of laser-driven particle acceleration in a structure-loaded vacuum. So if we're kind of going through this one, the experimental demonstration is kind of a long way of just saying, I think we could edit that to the experiment. And then we get, is the first of its kind and is a proof of principle. Notice the use of the verb to be, is and is. That's kind of a boring verb, so maybe we can put in a slightly better verb there. And first of its kind and is a proof of principle is a little bit repetitive. What if we just said the experiment provides the first, and then we don't need of its kind, the first proof of principle for the concept of. Again, that doesn't really add anything. That's kind of vague words. Just say what you mean. So it uh, provides the first proof of principle of laser-driven particle acceleration in a structure-loaded vacuum. So we can edit that one down to the experiment provides the first proof of principle of laser-driven particle acceleration in a structure-loaded vacuum. And I just want to acknowledge Deborah Biasca of the University of Colorado Boulder, who uh, shared some writing samples in physics with me that are in some of my slides. So I really want you to get in the habit of cutting unnecessary words. You have to be kind of vigilant and ruthless here. And this is really hard because after investing all this effort to put your words on the page, you kind of spend a lot of time wrestling with a sentence. You might have read it over many times in your head and it's starting to kind of sound good. It starts to be hard to give up those words. Um, but you're going to have to kind of fight that and go ahead and Try to find some of these uh, types of uh, extra words that I've been talking about. Try to find them in your sentence. And it might feel really hard to pull them out, but go ahead and try to pull them out. Try the sentence without those extra words and read it and see how it's better. See how it conveys the same idea with more power. And what I always tell people is you always have the undo key. You always have the control Z. That is, you can take the word out or the words out Read the sentence without them. If you don't like the new version, you can always put those words back in. So you always have that crutch that you can put those words back in. And I can't tell you how many times I've done this. I've said, well, you know, I really like that word very in there. I really like that quite. I don't want to take it out. But I said, OK, I'm going to try taking it out. I can always control Z it back in. And I never, ever have put the word back in. It's always better without it. So here's an example. Here's a perfectly good sentence. Brain injury incidence shows two peak periods in almost all reports. Rates are the highest in young people and the elderly. But compare that to the following, which has a lot more punch. Brain injury incidence peaks in the young and the elderly. See how much crisper, how much more power that second sentence has when we get rid of all the extra extraneous unnecessary words. So here's sources of common clutter that you should be on the lookout for. So 
dead weight words and phrases, as it has, is well known, as it has been shown, it can be regarded that, it should be emphasized that. Again, these are just kind of the authors clearing their throats. Uh, you can provide citations to show that it's been well known or that it's been shown. You can almost uh, delete those dead weight words and phrases completely, almost always. Empty words and phrases, basic tenets of, methodologic, important. Again, those types of words really don't add much because they're so vague. And I like this quote from William Zinzerk. He says, some words and phrases are blobs. And that's really, really true, right? Some words and phrases just feel like blobs. They don't really add anything. And long words or phrases that could be short, such as muscular and cardiorespiratory performance, which is just a fancy way to say fitness. Another thing you should be on the lookout for is unnecessary jargon and acronyms. So again, muscular and cardiorespiratory performance would be an example. Gliomogenesis, we saw that in an earlier module. MIR, uh, the use of acronyms. Um, we want to avoid acronyms unless they're really, really standard and well known throughout science. We want to get rid of any extra repetition, repetitive words or phrases. We saw some examples earlier, uh, studies and examples, that was in repetition. El illustrate and demonstrate challenges and difficulties. And then we had successful solutions where the adjective repeated what was already in the noun because the solution has to be successful. And then finally, adverbs. Everybody loves to put in adverbs when they're talking, in email, on a first draft. But in uh, your writing, I'm going to ask you to go back and take those out because they're almost never uh, useful. They're usually just extra weight in your sentence. So even though you feel like you really need to put that very or that really, uh, you're really not making uh, your statement or your idea more powerful by adding that adverb. So I want you to cut out all those adverbs, very, really, quite, basically, generally, etc. So here's some examples of long words and phrases that could be short. I could uh, give you tons and tons of these examples. We'll do some for homework. Uh, a majority of that could be just most. And again, these are words that are not uh, the main key ideas or the main key words of the sentence. So you don't want to spend time on words that aren't what's the main idea of the sentence. A number of that could just be many. Are of the same opinion. I love that one. That's just agree. Less frequently occurring, well, how about just rare? All three of the, well, just the three. Give rise to, that's just cause. Due to the fact that, that's one of my favorites. That's a lot of extra words for saying because. And you're, again, you're not gaining anything by putting all those extra words in. Have an effect on, that could just be effect. You can think of lots of examples like this. So here's an example of a sentence that's got a little bit of a wordy phrase in it. The expected prevalence of mental retardation based on the assumption that intelligence is normally distributed is about 2.5%. So based on the assumption that, what's a short way to say based on the assumption that? Well, how about just if the expected prevalence of mental retardation, if intelligence is normally distributed, is 2.5%. Here's an example of some rep repetition. Uh, this is a repetitive clause. A robust cell-mediated Im immune response is necessary. And deficiency in this response predisposes an individual towards active TB. Notice how the two parts of that sentence actually really say the same thing. One says it's necessary, and the other says if you don't have it, you're more likely to get TB. So both of those pieces are really kind of saying the same thing. So we can edit that and get rid of the repetition by just saying deficiency in T cell mediated immune response predisposes an individual to active TB. We didn't really need the first uh, part of that sentence. A quote to end on here and uh, cutting the clutter. Uh, this is a great quote. He says, I have only made this letter rather long because I have not had time to make it shorter. Uh, of course, it was originally in French. I won't try to pronounce that. But really, there's, there's something to this, right? Uh, you, you feel like you know, you've spent all this time. You've written this kind of long thing, but the last step of that, the final most important step, is that you go back and make it shorter. You really refine it and take out all the extra garbage and get really down to the essence of what you're trying to say. And that's really where you get the elegance in your writing. So we're really going to try to cut all of that extra clutter. And I know some, you know, probably most of you had courses in the past in high school or college where you were told, oh, you have to, you know, fill. 10 pages, you have to write a 10-page report, and that was the minimum. 
And of course, you probably didn't have 10 pages worth of things to say. And so, you know, you started learning to fill your writing with a lot of extra words that were unnecessary and a lot of repetition. So I gotta, I want you to, you know, kind of break yourself of that habit and learn to now strip your words, of, uh, you know, strip your writing of everything that isn't uh, necessary. Get down to the key ideas and tell uh, your reader what you want to get across efficiently. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.